Now we're going to focus on the endocrine system. The endocrine system is summarized by the following descriptions. It's a slow chemical communication system. It regulates many different body functions. It maintains homeostasis, which means it creates a balance in these body systems by regulating the production of chemicals that affect those functions of the body. It secretes substances that aid the nervous system. It's an important regulator of growth and development, especially as we're talking about puberty and changes of the body. It is a ductless gland system, meaning that it does not have ducts or tubes that secrete hormones. So the endocrine system is going to secrete the hormone directly into the bloodstream. And this is going to be different from the exocrine system in which the exocrine system needs a duct or tube to secrete its substance. So the endocrine system is ductless or without tubes. We're going to be focusing on 10 different glands of the body. We're going to start with uh, the hypothalamus, pituitary, and penile glands, which are in the brain. Then we're going to work our way down uh, to the throat area, which we're going to have the thyroid, and then the parathyroids. Uh, the parathyroids are more posterior, meaning in the back of the thyroid. Then you're going to move down to the pancreas, which is near the stomach, and then you have the adrenal glands above the kidneys. Then we're going to lastly end with the gonads dealing with the ovaries of the female and testes of the male. And as you can see on this page, there's a summary of the overall function of each of these glands. And as we were just talking about the structures and location of the glands, keywords or terms, uh, the first one is a hormone. A hormone is a chemical transmitter that's released in small amounts by certain glands. This is then going to be transported in the bloodstream and it's going to target certain organs or specific groups of cells. Now hormones uh, are going to regulate growth, development, hormones are going to impact mood, tissue function, uh, metabolism, and sexual function. Now these hormones are going to transfer this information and also certain instructions from one set of cells to another. So it's a communication system. Now hormones will cause certain organs or cells to start or stop certain functions. Uh, many times when we're talking about uh, the start and stop, we're going to relate this to a thermostat. We can relate this to a thermostat. And I'll be talking about that in just a little bit. If you're not sure what a thermostat is, it regulates the temperature in your house. And so uh, your basic uh, endocrine system is kind of like that. So here we have a mouse on the left that's obese. And this is primarily because of the hormone secreted by the adipose cells. Now the hormone is called leptin. And basically uh, leptin is going to uh, regulate long-term energy balance. It's going to regulate appetite, and control fat storage. So basically what we have here with this overweight mouse is that it has low leptin levels. Because of the low leptin levels, it then has an enormous appetite. So basically when uh, a scientist will inject the mouse with leptin, uh, the mouse's body is now able to uh, create more of a balance controlling the appetite and uh, helping with more fat uh, storage, bring the mouse's weight back to normal. Now homeostasis, as we said, is a balance in the body systems and we have uh, two prefixes that you need to know. Hypo meaning low or too little, a low amount, while hyper meaning above or more, too much. So hypo meaning below or under, and hyper meaning above. Now, this is usually added to uh, the hormone, and so we'll be talking about a hyposecretion or a hypothyroidism. Uh, um, this is going to be focusing on below the certain secretion or below the certain hormone amount. Hypersecretion of any hormone 
Now, there are two types of feedback mechanisms. There's negative feedback and positive feedback. Now, negative feedback is kind of like that thermostat we were talking about in the house. Uh, once the temperature reaches uh, the thermostat setting, so if I set my thermostat to uh, 70 degrees, uh, basically, if it goes below that, the heat will turn on. If uh, it goes above that, the air conditioning can uh, turn on. So uh, basically, the thermostat detects change and triggers uh, the heat, the furnace, uh, to turn on and warm the house. So a good example of this is uh, body sugar. Uh, so body sugar is going to increase after a meal. Now the pancreas secretes insulin, which tells the body cells to take in the glucose, okay, the sugar. Once the blood sugar level reaches normal, we're taking in the glucose, it reaches normal, then the pancreas stops making insulin. So it says, okay, we reached a level, we don't need any more, let's turn it off. Often to maintain homeostasis, uh, we're going to have two different hormones that are going to have different effects. And basically, uh, these opposite effects uh, are going to be, as we said, kind of like that thermostat. Uh, it's kind of like if the blood pressure drops too low, the pituitary gland is going to kick in with ADH. And then that causes the kidneys to reabsorb water. But then if the blood pressure goes too high, okay, it's kind of like the, now the air conditioning is going to turn on the ANH hormone will be released, and then this causes the kidneys to reabsorb less water. So um, it is going to have this opposite effect, kind of like the thermostat and the air conditioning and heating systems, where if it's too low, too cold, heat will turn on, and then if it's too hot, air conditioning will turn on. So we have two different hormones that can try and keep this balance. So this it's a constant up and down, up and down, to try and create this homeostasis. Now that's negative feedback. Positive feedback is going to be different. Positive feedback is not an up and down, uh, constant control of events. Uh, the focus here is it's not really going to be focusing on homeostasis. It's more of, okay, here we have a severe need, let's provide the certain hormone okay, during this time. Now a good example of this is childbirth. So oxytocin is going to be stimulated to enhance uh, labor contractions. As the labor continues, more and more oxytocin is going to be produced. This intensifies the contractions until the baby is born. And then the production of the hormone stops. And as that stops, contractions will stop. It's just more in a time of need to get it done and to provide that hormone to reach a certain purpose. It's not an up and down. Here's a list of some hormones we're going to talk about. We are going to talk about quite a few different ones, but this is the main list and you have uh, the gland, the hormone, and the function. The first gland we're going to talk about is the hypothalamus. Now the thalamus receives sensory information and sends it to the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus is going to monitor body temperature, uh, pH, so how acidic or basic uh, the body fluids are. It's going to signal the pituitary gland uh, to see if certain conditions need to be fixed or corrected. But the main thing here is it's going to control thirst, hunger, and sleep and emotional activity. Now the pituitary gland, as you see it here in the picture, is a little bit lower, further down from where the hypothalamus was. The pituitary gland is referred to as the master gland as it signals other glands to produce certain hormones when needed. Primarily the anterior lobe is what receives the signals we're going to be focusing on the anterior pituitary mainly, and it's going to send out uh, certain hormones to other endocrine glands. Now, the posterior pituitary gland is going to primarily going to be receiving the hormones such as oxytocin, antidiuretic hormone, 
um, from the hypothalamus and relay them through the body. So the interior usually sends out certain hormones while the posterior is usually receiving and then relays them to the body. So you can see uh, some of the main hormones listed. Uh, we're really going to focus on the ones that are colored. Those are going to be the main ones. Now the pituitary gland is going to secrete nine different hormones uh, that affect different things. And as we said, we're really going to focus on growth, blood pressure, metabolism, but there's other functions as well. So the first one that we're going to focus on is the human growth hormone. Now the pituitary gland controls growth of the development of the bones and the muscles and organs. This young man, uh, after the surgery, ends up being seven feet tall. Uh, that could be a overproduction from the pituitary gland by the human growth hormone. Um, a lot of um, bodybuilders and actors will take uh, artificial human growth hormones to get very muscular. Uh, but uh, usually we're going to see um, people who have either a overabundance of the human growth hormone or even a deficiency of the hum human growth hormone. And then we have the thyroid stimulating hormone, which is uh, important for the growth and development of the thyroid gland. The antidiuretic hormone or the ADH, uh, basically this is going to focus on reabsorption of water. So dehydration under heat usually is going to cause a sharp increase of the ADH hormones. So this is going to primarily reduce water loss by a lower urine volume. Then we have the melanocyte stimulating hormone. Uh, this focuses on skin pigment, so darker skin. And this is going to promote the deposit of melanin in the skin after the exposure to sunlight. Then we have oxytocin, which is going to focus on labor and delivery of the child. Uh, it's also going to stimulate uh, prolactin, which is going to be the release of milk. Uh, artificial oxytocin can be used to induce labor. We have acromegaly, which is a hypersecretion of the human growth hormone. Uh, which is referred to as pituitary giantism. We have pituitary dwarfism, which is a hyposecretion. And then we also have diabetes insipidus, which is a, also a hyper, which is a hyposecretion of the ADH hormone. And so basically, uh, this can create a large production of dilute urine as well as creating a great thirst. On the left, we have Andre the Giant, a pro wrestler, if you ever saw. He was a wrestler who uh, wrestled with Hulk Hogan, and uh, very uh, popular in the 80s. Uh, he was also in the movie Princess Bride. Uh, he died in 1993 of congestive heart failure, uh, but he as you look at his uh, different features, hands, face, uh, the large body compared to other people, uh, you can see that this is uh, a form of giantism. And then on the right, we have uh, pituitary dwarfism impacting the limbs of the body and the torso and uh, face as well. Then we move into the penile gland. The penile gland is the last little structure that we're going to focus on in the brain. Uh, the penile gland actually is described as a pine cone shaped. And the penile gland is uh, called this because it is shaped like a tiny little pine cone and that is located in the center of the brain. It controls sleep patterns, specifically the circadian rhythm or circadian cycle of sleep and wakefulness. This is this pattern of when to sleep, when to be awake, and then uh, this is also uh, controlled by the secretion of melatonin. Now, melatonin is different from your melanin. So melatonin is referring to the sleep hormone. So we have melatonin, which is going to primarily affect the sleep and wake cycles. Uh, serotonin also impacts the sleep but it's primarily going to be a neurotransmitter impacting vasoconstriction or the constriction of the veins 
the blood vessels. It's going to primarily impact appetite, mood, anger, metabolism, learning. Now we have the thyroid gland, which is uh, near the trachea and the throat. It is located in the neck, and it plays a vital role in metabolism and the metabolic processes. So this is metabolism is referring to breaking down food to get energy. It's the chemical reactions in the body that change food into energy. It releases thyroxin. So the thyroid gland releases thyroxin to regulate the metabolism of the body. And uh, it's essential and important for normal physical and mental development. Now, if you have an over-secretion of the thyroxin, it can result in nervousness and weight loss. But an under-secretion of that thyroxin uh, can not only impact uh, gaining weight, uh, but it can also impact mental development, uh, creating a smaller size in the development of children. Now, the thyroid gland is going to produce calcitonin, and this is going to influence bone and calcium metabolism. It's going to impact the calcium in the blood plasma as well as the bone. And then we have the T3 and T4 hormones, thyroxine, and basically these are going to also impact metabolic rate and influence physical mental development. Now some abnormalities of the thyroid would be Hashimoto's disease, which is a hypo, remember meaning under, or a low amount of the T3, T4 hormones. This is an autoimmune disease, remember it attacks the body, uh, causing chronic inflammation and failure of the thyroid gland. Then you have Graves' disease, which is a hypersecretion of the T3 and T4, and this can be a swelling of the neck, protrusion of the eyes, and another type of hypersecretion of the T3 and T4 hormones is the creation of a goiter, which is a large swelling of the thyroid gland. It's an enlarged gl thyroid gland, which will look like there's a huge bubble developing of the neck. And here are some pictures. So on the left, you have uh, the swelling of the thyroid. And then on the right, you have Graves' disease, which is the bulging of the eyes. Then we have the parathyroid gland. And as you can see in the picture, uh, those little small circular parts within the thyroid gland uh, are the parathyroid glands. And this is a posterior or back view. So we have two pairs of parathyroid glands. So we have four parathyroid glands in the posterior back side of the thyroid. This also is going to control metabolism, metabolism of calcium. Uh, it's going to be important for nerve and muscle function, blood clotting, uh, healthy bones and teeth. The hormone that's going to be released is the parathormone, so parathyroid. If you have an under secretion of the parathormone, uh, this is going to impact the nerve, so you will have nerve dis brittle bones because of the calcium amount, cramping, and blood clotting problems. Over secretion can lead to osteoporosis or kidney stones, so too much of the calcium being built up. Hyper, remember meaning more, hyperparathyroidism uh, can lead to overactivity of the parathyroid glands, usually caused by a tumor, and then the hypoparathyroidism is going to impact, as we said, low blood calcium levels, and this can include bone loss and muscle paralysis. The thymus gland, we talked about, does shrink in the adult compared to the size it was in a child. It's part of the immune system, and it's located in the chest above the heart. And as we said, uh, it does produce T cells, then we move into the pancreas, and you have the islets of Langerhans. The islets of Langerhans are small clusters of cells located in the pancreas, and the main fun function and overall important thing to know about the hormones is that it secretes insulin and glucagon. 
Insulin is going to stimulate glucose uptake in the cells, while glucagon is going to promote the conversion of the, of the glycogen to glucose. So insulin okay, stimulates glucose uptake, so it's taking it in, while glycogon converts the glycogen to glucose. Now, we have three cells here. We have the alpha cell, which is going to break down the glycogen into glucose, so this gives us more blood sugar. Remember, glucose is sugar. So alpha cells, glycogen to glucose, so now we have more sugar here. It elevates blood sugar. The delta cells suppress the glycogon and insulin, while the beta cells are, are going to secrete insulin, the hormone insulin, which is essential for the maintenance of normal blood sugar levels. So remember, insulin helps blood sugar enter the body cells so it can be used for energy. Insulin is also going to have the liver store blood sugar for later use. So insulin is going to lower the blood sugar and glycogon is going to convert glycogen to glucose, increasing the blood sugar. So an over-secretion of insulin re results in a low blood sugar, while an under-secretion or hyposecretion of insulin, okay, so now we have more glucose, we have a high blood sugar. This can lead to diabetes. And as we said, the abnormalities, we already talked about uh, diabetes a little bit. We have type 1 or your juvenile diabetes, which is found in children or young adults. And so symptoms of this could be unusual thirst, frequent urination, unusual weight loss, extreme hunger, and fatigue. While diabetes type 2, uh, not producing enough insulin, or the cells just ignore it. Because of that, you have too much sugar over a long period of time. And then this can result in your cells building up a to tolerance for insulin and cuts and bruises take a longer time to heal. Then we have the adrenal glands, which are on the tops of the kidneys. The adrenal glands are a type of triangular pyramid-shaped gland on top of each kidney with a center medulla or middle layer and an outside cortex. So remember medulla meaning middle, cortex referring to the outer part. The hormones are cortisone and adrenaline. The function of the cortisone is to regulate carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, uh, the metabolism there. Uh, it's going to promote conversion of fats to glucose and then Adrenaline is going to raise the blood sugar levels and increase the heartbeat and breathing rates. Uh, it's also going to secrete epinephrine and norepinephrine, which help with the fight or flight response. This is going to arouse the body in times of stress. So cortisol regulates your metabolism, helps the body cope during stress, Corticosterone is like cortisol. It's a steroid. It influences different metal. It influences metabolism of different elements such as potassium and sodium to use those and break those down. Aldosterone regulates electrolyte and water balance. And androgens are going to focus on certain hormones like testosterone which help promote the development of the secondary sex characteristics in the male. So the focus androgens focus on testosterone. Some abnormalities, if we have a hyposecretion, a low amount, the adrenal hormones, it's going to create Addison's disease. And if you have too much, it can result in Cushing's disease. So you can see here, here's Cushing's disease. Cushing's disease, usually uh, a lot of the main symptoms is obesity. So uh, stretch marks, a lot of fat de deposits all over the body, osteoporosis, uh, muscles uh, are starting to um, 
break down and waste away, you have a lot of skin ulcers and hypertension. Now, Addison's disease is a hyposecretion. So basically, we're not producing enough of the right steroid hormones. So this can lead to different pigmentations in the skin, uh, a bleaching of the skin. Uh, that's vitiligo. This can happen on the hands and the face. Uh, can lead to weight loss, low blood pressure, nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, abdominal pain, fever. Then we move into the two gonads of the female and male. We have the ovaries here producing estrogen and progesterone. Uh, remember, this prepares the uterus for pregnancy, as well as taking care of the baby, releasing prolactin as well. Estrogen is important for the growth and development of the female sex organs. And then we have the testes, which will produce testosterone, and it is essential for the normal growth and development of the male sex organs.